Okay, income $100,000, nice. RSP deduction $18,000, very good. New taxable income $82,000. Tax refund $6,153, awesome. Wait, hold on. Tax refund? New taxable income? RSP deduction? What? What is all this? Well, this is just simply the effect that an RRSP contribution has on our taxable income. In this case, we have achieved tax arbitrage. Hey, hey buddy, why don't you go slick your hair somewhere else? This is my show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hi, I'm Steve from Cash College and this is the beginner's guide to the RRSP. <laughs> So, you're interested in learning about the Registered Retirement Savings Plan, are you? Well, first of all, give yourself a good old-fashioned pat on the back, because this means that you're interested in setting yourself up nicely for the future, and honestly, it just warms my heart. The RRSP is an essential component of our long-term savings, and that's because it allows us to both shelter our investments from tax, and more notably, allows us to save money on taxes. So if you're interested in supercharging your retirement savings, then you are in the right place. In today's video, I'm going to explain what the RRSP is, how it works, how to decide if you should actually contribute to one, and the rules regarding it. And hopefully we'll have some fun along the way too. So first of all, the RRSP is designed specifically for retirement savings. This means that it is a long-term investment account and any money that you put into the account, you should not need for a very long time, probably decades. That's because unlike the TFSA, the RRSP has implications for withdrawing your money out of the account, but more on that later. The main benefit of using the RRSP is to achieve tax arbitrage. That's right, you're going to learn something really cool today that you can share with new friends at a party. Hey, do you like tax arbitrage? Tax arbitrage just simply means profiting from the difference that arises because of the way taxes are calculated in different scenarios. And the RRSP allows us to do this legally, of course. There's three basic steps that I wanna walk you through to illustrate how this works. And the first step is earning a taxable income. The second step is contributing to the RRSP. And the third step is withdrawing from the RRSP. So let's break these down. Now in the first step, we earn income. And when we earn income, that means we have to pay taxes. Hello. Oh, sorry, not interested today. I believe you have something of mine but we can reduce the taxes that we owe, sometimes resulting in a tax refund. So in step two, we're going to contribute to our RRSP and now watch what happens. Oh my goodness, Steve, right? Uh, yes, sir. I'm so sorry, I've made a mistake. I see here that you've contributed to your RRSP and reduced your taxable income to the point where we now owe you money. You do? I mean, you do. So sorry about that, sir. Here you are. Thank you, have a nice day. Yes, that can actually happen. You can receive money back from the government in the form of a tax refund after you contribute to your RRSP. But now in the third step, when we withdraw money from the RRSP, we're going to get another visit from the tax man. Oh, it's you again. Hello, old friend. It's time. I guess so. You look about ready. Ready for what? To die. You said it's your time to die. No, it's time for you to pay your taxes. Stop playing games. Besides, you owe less money in taxes now since your tax bracket is lower. So it was a net gain for you. Oh, sorry. I just fell asleep. Net gain, you say? I'm not gonna lie, guys. I feel like I'm a terrible actor, but I, I really do have a lot of fun with those, and I hope you guys do too. Anyway, that's right. 
Although we do have to pay some taxes back in the future, if we use the RRSP correctly, we should result in a net gain. Let me break down each step in detail so you can understand why this happens and so that you can use the RRSP correctly. So to do this, I'm gonna jump into a calculator. Okay, folks, so we're gonna be doing a bit of math and you know math is... Math is a wonderful thing. Math is a really cool thing. So get off your ass, let's do some math, 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 math. So in step one, we said that that's when I would earn income. So we said I'd earn $100,000 worth of income. And at an income of that level, I'm going to have to pay $27,563 in taxes. But then in step two, we said that I was going to contribute to my RRSP. So on this line, we can put that in. And I'll say that I'm gonna contribute $18,000. Now watch what happened here. This used to be $27,000. Now it's only $21,000. And that's because, look at this line here, RRSP tax savings of over $6,500. And that's because I contributed to my RRSP here. Now the reason why this reduces the amount of taxes that I owe is because your RRSP contribution effectively reduces your taxable income by the amount that you contribute. So it reduces this $100,000 amount by $18,000. And watch, I'll, I'll show that to you. So taxes owed here are $21,050. Now I'm going to take away my RRSP contribution. Taxes go back up to normal. And now I'm going to change this to $82,000, which is $18,000 less than 100,000. And now look, the taxes are the exact same, see? So because for tax purposes, our income is actually lower than what it originally was, this can result in a tax refund. Now what actually happens with these tax savings? Well, if you are employed and you've already paid taxes through your employer, through your paycheck, then this means that you will actually receive money back from the government. And this generally comes in the form of either a check or a direct deposit, if you're set up for a direct deposit with the CRA. So in our example, I would receive over $6,000 back from the government in my bank account, which is pretty nice. But there is that little catch, and that's that I'm going to have to pay some of those taxes back in the future. But if you remember in the third step there, I talked about how that can be a net gain, and here's how. Okay, so in the income earning years, we had $100,000 worth of income. Now this puts me in a marginal tax bracket of 43.41%. Now pay attention to this number and watch how it changes. So now we're going to say that I'm in retirement. I've retired and I'm going to be pulling less income. So we'll use the average retirement uh, spending, household spending in Canada, which is $60,000. So we'll say that's my income in retirement. Now look at my marginal tax rate. It's only 29.65%. And here's why this matters. So when my income was $100,000, and I contributed to my RRSP, that generated me tax savings of $6,500. Now, when I'm in my retirement and I want to take this RRSP contribution out, here's how that works. So we'll say, first of all, so I have $42,000 $42, of income before I take out that additional $18,000 from my uh, RSP, that's going to make it $60,000 in total. And now so far I'd have to pay $8,457 worth of taxes. So I've written this number down and I'm going to save it for later. So now we're going to add in the $18,000 to that number to bring it to the total of $60,000. Now, the total taxes here that we'd have to pay in retirement off of an income of this level is 14,328. Now, what we want to figure out is how much additional taxes did we have to pay because we took that money out of our RRSP. And to do that, we'll plug these into the calculator. So right now, the total taxes payable is 14,328 and we'll subtract that 8,457 from it 
to see that our $18,000 RSP withdrawal costed us about $5,871 in taxes. But if you remember when we put that RSP contribution in, we actually saved $6,500 worth of taxes. So in this case, it's a net profit for us. It's almost $1,000 of profit because of the way the taxes worked out here. Because we're taking the money out in a lower tax bracket, we get an additional $1, almost $1,000 from the way we decided to plan our RRSP contributions and withdrawals. Now you might be thinking, wow, I want to become a tax arbitrator. That's probably not the right word. No, that's definitely not right. Anyway, hold up. The only way that this is going to work out to be tax arbitrage is if you contribute to your RSP when you are in a higher tax bracket than you anticipate you'll be when you retire. And how the heck do you anticipate what tax bracket you'll be in when you retire? It's kind of hard to be honest, especially the younger you are. So what I would say is a good starting point is just to use the average household spending in retirement for Canadians, which is about $60,000 per year as a rule of thumb. So this would put you in a marginal tax bracket of 29.65% if you're in Ontario. And so this basically just means that you wouldn't contribute to your RSP until you have an income that's greater than $78,000 per year. Once you get over that income level, you can start making contributions to your RRSP at a higher tax bracket than you'll be in when you retire. And this is how you achieve the tax arbitrage. In addition to this awesome tax benefit, the RRSP also has another tax benefit, and that's that it can shelter investments from tax, just like the TFSA. If you watch my video on the TFSA, you'll already know what I mean, but I'll break it down quickly again for you here. So let's say in this scenario, the cold air is the effect of taxes. So our friend in the tax shelter here can just simply slip into the nice hot tub and He's not hurt at all by taxes. He's just maxing and relaxing. But our friend on the right hand side is completely exposed to the cold air, is not having a good time as you can see and is just freezing. So the RSP both defers tax to a later date and it shelters your investments from tax at the same time. Now that we've talked about the tax benefits, we should probably talk about the rules. Now, if you watch my video on the TFSA, then it's going to make them a little bit easier to understand because they're pretty similar. The RSP also has contribution limit rules, but they are a little bit different than the TFSA. This time around, your contribution limit for your RSP is set at 18% of your previous year's income or the maximum allowable limit for the year, whichever is less. So if I earned $100,000 last year, that means I can contribute up to $18,000 into my RRSP. The maximum allowable contribution for 2020 is $27,230. And since $18,000 is the lesser amount of the two, that means I have to go with $18,000 as my limit for the year. But in addition to this, like the TFSA, your unused contribution room adds up every single year. So every year in your life that you earned income that you reported to the CR that means that 18% of that has been adding up as room in your RRSP. If you haven't used any of that room yet, then you might have a nice chunk that's waiting for you. And in this case, you can contribute over the maximum allowable limit for the year because the maximum allowable limit for the year does not include unused contribution room. So if you had a total of $50,000 worth of unused contribution room from previous years, you could contribute that entire $50,000 even though the maximum allowable limit for the year was that $27,000. The maximum allowable limit is more to put a cap on the high income earners who would multiply their salary by that 18% number so that they can't go above that. 
because if somebody was earning $1 million, 18% of that would be $180,000 that they could put into their RSP, which would be a little bit crazy. So that's why they set a cap on that 18% number, basically. Now, the easiest way to make sure you have the right number for your RSP contribution room is to check on the My CRA website. Like I showed in my TFSA video, the CRA website shows exactly your room for both the TFSA and the RRSP. So then you know that you're not gonna mess it up. Also, you can check the number on your notice of assessment that you would have received last year after filing your taxes. The number will also be shown there too. And I think that about covers it. I just want to remind you again that this account is specifically for long-term investing. It is not for short-term use. So money that you're putting into it, don't expect to use that money again for a long time. At least if you wanna use the account to its maximum potential. And you might be wondering, should you choose the TFSA or the RSP? Or what type of investments should you hold inside your RSP? These are all great questions and they're all questions that I'm going to answer in future videos. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you get those videos too. And please leave me a comment if you have any questions. And with all that being said, Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you again soon.